So yeah, it's just that good. I think it's the combination of G10 and LC200N. There really aren't many other toxic or corrosive environments I could place this in to test it. And, I, and even if I could find them, I just don't think this would really be too phased. You know of a place. No, that's really not needed. I'm sure it'd be fine anyway. Do it. The people need to know. All right, big fella. What's one more round through the grinder, huh? My noodles. Hello, can a steel with 0.01% carbon hold an edge to save its life? That is a question I'm going to be posing and hopefully answering today with this Nitrobe 77 steel. This is another one of those super rush resistant steels akin to H1 and LC200N. So we're looking at this recipe specifically definitely seems to be subbing out some of the, or well, all of the carbon pretty much, with a healthy dose of nitrogen. So it's got about double the nitrogen of LC200N and about eight to 10 times the nitrogen of H1. Uh, so nitrogen, when it is heat treated correctly, forms nitrides, which will do decent cutting work. They'll form an edge and they will hold an edge very well. In fact, the addition of nitrogen to LC200N um, in the face of its middling carbon uh, content does seem to give it a fair boost to compete with the likes of say S30V as a good edge holding steel. That's at least as far as my tests have gone. This one here, basically no carbon. So it is all leaning on that nitrogen very heavily. And also on the uh, capabilities of the heat treater. So Mr. Creeley, Gary Creeley Blades has sent this one to me. I have had two of these patterns before that I bought. This one he sent to me, so thank you, Gary. I certainly don't encourage or ask for gifts, but uh, Gary, I guess, felt like being nice to me, and so he sent this one along. Very, very cool. Very rare steel as well. I don't think they even make this stuff anymore. So, heat treated to 62 or 63, about that range. So it's very hard, and you've seen it tested for rust resistance already. Very, very rust resistant. Could not even get the surface to look anything other than factory fresh uh, after a 12 hour period or so in um, some salt water. So yeah, it's a, um, it's a it's a performer already in a couple of ways because it's also very easy to sharpen, which doesn't really bode well for edge retention perhaps. You know what else is easy to sharpen? Victorian steel, and that, you know, H1, very easy to sharpen. But then LC200 isn't horrible to sharpen either. Um, at 63 Rockwell though, I was very happy, or 62, 63 Rockwell, I was very happy with its uh, sharpen ability as well. What I'm not in, at all, what I'm not in the slightest um, uh, illuminated on so far is how it's going to hold an edge. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab this blade, we're going to we'll have put a 17 degree mirror polished edge on it, and we're going to see how many times it cuts through the twisted sisal rope before it no longer slices a held sheet of paper. And that is hopefully the answer to our question. So I mean looking at the recipe, is it going to perform as well as LC200N? I don't know. Is it going to perform better than H1? Probably. H1, in my experience, I haven't had a great deal of success with. It's just got nothing in it that's really making for hardness or like edge stability or anything. It's just a purely rust-free almost steel, which is great. Great. No problems at all with that. But um, this one, I think, has got a little bit more effort put into making it actually a viable edge retaining steel too. So. Let's have a look at how it goes in the cut test. Um, you can perhaps compare these because it's the same edge angle, very similar blade type and shape to some of those mules. So this S90V mule, I know it's a slightly taller blade. Same edge on it, we'll see how they compare, huh? Um, and there's probably, I mean, I'd be very surprised if it catches the S90V, but whatevs. 
Um, but you know, it'd be interesting to see if it can go anywhere near S30V, for example. That's probably more interesting comparison with the Spyderco Amalgam with the same edge. I got 425, I believe. Uh, so let's plug it into the Peep machine and see how much I can get this cut. Let's get to it. Two twenty-five. Alrighty, so two twenty-five. That's not super high. Let's, let's call it what it is. But it's not super low either. It's a, a definitely, a, definitely a fine edge. I mean, you did have to heat treat it to sixty-two or sixty-three to get it there, and it's probably still just competing with, say, VG10 in terms of its edge retention. Uh, I wouldn't say this is going to hold its edge as long as LC200N, um, but I think it is definitely safe to say it's probably going to hold a bit better than H1. So. Oh. H1, I always get to shit. I always get shit from everyone for saying H with a H sound, which seems to me so bizarre because the letter is a H sound. The letter itself, H, is a H. Hmm. Anyway, H H1 H H1 uh, it doesn't seem to perform as well as this in my experience. So yeah. That's the result for this one. It is very, very interesting. Um, very fan very sort of fancy still. Expensive, difficult to heat treat. They don't make it anymore. I mean, the more, um, you know, the common sense person would say, well, LC200 probably does everything as good or better, except for maybe sheer rust resistance, but then how much rust resistance do you need? I don't know, if you're building like a, uh, something to submerge into, pull with vats of acid, you might want to build it out of this still. Um, if, especially if you needed to cut stuff when you got to the bottom of the vat of acid, but apart from that, don't know. Don't know. Anyway, Nitrobe 77, fascinating stuff. Thank you again to Mr. Creeley for sending me this blade. Um, it is a real nice, nice little knife and yeah, definitely a great, useful pattern too. So check out Mr. Creeley's knives. Um, I, I follow him on Instagram and um, by all means, uh, like and subscribe to me too if you like more of this content. So I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye, guys. Mm -hmm.